What's up everybody, welcome back. I got another Colorado and Canyon video for you this week. Um, basically I'm moving and trying to get rid of some stuff and move some stuff out. I've had a couple parts laying around for a while. I've had them for over a year now. But uh, time for me to finally get them installed on the truck. Uh, I figured I'd make a quick video for you guys and show you what I got. Basically it's a uh, uh, a new charging system and battery for for the canyons and I'll show you parts I got and how I got them installed all right so the main part I got is this battery bracket this is from sasquatchparts.com it basically replaces the factory bracket with this one and with this one you can install a group 31 battery in our trucks so giant battery and it's uh, a lot larger capacity than the stock battery. Uh, this part's pretty nice. It comes with everything. It comes with all the fuses. It's got some the big boy fuses in here, the 400, and it's got a 250 as well. And then in the in the other one, just like the stock truck or the stock bracket, it's got all these 100 amp relays or not relays but fuses. It also comes with this uh, negative side battery post. Not sure if I'm going to be using this because um, I'm going to be replacing all that. But uh, yeah, super nice. It I got it in black. It also comes in there. They have like a signature like green color as well that uh, you can get this in. But yeah, looking forward to seeing how this fits. And to go with that bracket, I got this battery. This is the Odyssey Extreme. Here's part number. It's the ODX AGM. It's an AGM style battery. Uh, group 31, obviously. So here's a couple of stats from this. Uh, it's 1150 cold cranking amps. Uh, it's got 205 minutes of reserve um, all charging specs there a uh, big thing to look at is this thing weighs 77 pounds or 77.8 it's uh definitely heavy so like actual physical weight of this thing and you can feel it i definitely agree with that number but you can see how big this thing is my hands aren't enormous by any means but um yeah definitely a giant battery so Looking to get this thing installed. All right, so the next part I got is this alternator. This is a factory GM alternator. This is the one that actually comes on like the Chevy Express or the GMC Savannahs, the, the full-size vans. Uh, you can get those with the 2.8 Duramax as well. This is the alternator for those. Um, here's the part number. Right there, you can see the part number. But this is a 220 amp alternator. I believe the stock one in our trucks is either a 140 or a 160. I'm not 100% sure on what the stock capacity is, but this one's 220. So it's exactly the same. Uh, the plug-in is just a two-wire with the B-positive terminal over here um, going to the battery. So pretty excited to get that installed. It should be a drop-in. I don't understand why it would be any different, but... I'm going to try to fit this up and see if it works. This thing's like, I think it's like 230 240 bucks, brand new. So it's kind of pricey, but um, when you compare it to like a, like a U.S. alternators or some, you know, one of them like car audio, like high output alternators, this one's actually reasonably priced for, uh, for the amperage that you get out of it. Plus it looks like a factory part. Along with that alternator, I obviously got some just replacement, stock replacement stuff. Um, nothing special about any of this. It's just uh, a tensioner, you know, with the pulley and then the belt. I also got a separate uh, either pulley here. Um, these, these bearings wear out all the time, so this is a steel pulley as well. So this one's plastic, but um, I've seen these fail a lot, so I'm just going to replace it. Anytime I like to take this stuff off, um, I like to replace it. My truck's only got like 65,000 miles on it, so um, this stuff shouldn't be worn out, but... If I'm going to have it apart, you know, this stuff is cheap. It's easy to replace when you have it apart. So might as well just throw it all in there. Here's the uh, part number for this stuff if you guys want it. All right, everybody, I'm going to walk you through this. A couple issues I had, nothing too crazy, but um, just a couple things to look out for. I'm going to start by removing this stock battery. Obviously, disconnect the negative first. And then it's got this little power distribution thing on top of it. Just take it off, unhook all the wires, take the stock battery, pull down off, and then pull the battery out. 
took the cover off because it sits on top of the alternator a little bit. And then I'm going to work on uh, this boost tube here because it also sits on top of the alternator. So uh, it's got that little spring clamp on the intercooler there. It's kind of a pain, but once you figure out how it works, it's not too bad. Next thing I'm going to do is pull the belt off of here. This tensioner is kind of kind of a pain to get to, but uh, it's got a half inch uh, square drive on it, so you can just uh, put a wrench on there. Definitely get your big wrench though, because uh, it's a tight spring. So get that off of there, and then here I took the tensioner off so I can install my new one later. Um, I pulled the belt out. Also got the, uh, the either pulley off of there. I'm gonna start attacking this alternator here. It's just got two bolts holding it in, one on the top, one on the bottom. The one on the top, it hits the fan shroud there once you pull it out, so you just kinda, kinda bend the fan shroud. And it's got those uh, like sleeves in the holes there that kinda take up the slack in the, in the bracket. And the top one wasn't too bad, but that bottom one is like, I c you can't really get to it. So I'm just sitting here wiggling it, trying to get the alternator out and fighting it and fighting it. I ended up getting it out, but it did not come without a fight, so like there's no bolts holding this thing in there. It's just friction, and I'm fighting it. But finally got the wire off the back there once I got it loose, and then I tried to beat that sleeve on the bottom bolt hole out so uh, so I can get the new one in easier. But that bottom one was just tight for some reason. Maybe a little WD-40 probably would have helped, but ended up getting it loosened up. But Next thing, gonna install the new alternator. Drops right in there. Put the bolts in. Pretty standard. It's just two bolts. Um, I didn't torque anything. Just use my uh, one or two good good pulls on the wrench. Should get it tightened up. But uh, the plug in is the same. It's just two wire plug. It's the same as a stock alternator. The post is the same size and everything. So. Tighten these bolts up here. I'm gonna put the uh, either pulley back on. Got it snugged up. I'm gonna throw this belt back on here. The routing's not too bad. You don't have to like wrap it around the fan or nothing crazy like that. So um, just make sure you get it on all the pulleys. Put the new tensioner on here. I thought uh, I thought that the alternator, alternator pulley was a different size there for a second because as soon as I start tightening this thing, it's like not even close to fitting. But realize you got to put it on. You got to slip it over the either pulley and not the alternator pulley. Because we try to put it on the alternator pulley, it's got all those ribs on there, and you'll never get it on. Plus, it's a brand new belt with a brand new tensioner, so of course it's tight. Um, but I got it on there. It's just a little snug. Next, I'm going to put this new battery in here. Uh, it fits in the stock tray. The bottom, or the original battery, has like this foot on the bottom, one of them bottom clamps uh, on it. But this battery, this new battery, doesn't utilize that, so it just uses this top tray or uh, top battery mount. Um, just put the stud in there and bolt it on it works just fine got all the little wires hooked up got some posts screwed in there on the top positive and negative and then got the uh power distribution box wire hooked up to it kind of had to bend the uh the terminal a little bit because it's got a 90 degree on it from the factory and i just kind of put a little 45 on it after that and then the other wire is for the starter i tried to run it behind this uh battery uh, battery bracket, squeeze it in there, but I just could not get at it. I ended up having to loosen the battery bracket back up and then slide it back in there and tighten it back down. Got it hooked up just fine that way. And then I worked on this negative side. Uh, again, the wire is a little short. It's not really made for this battery. Kind of had to bend it. In the future, I'm going to reattack this and uh, 
uh, redo this. I'm not a huge fan of the way I did it, but I got it working just with what I got. I'm going to have to get some new terminals or something to uh, make this fit better. As you can tell, I'm just like beating it on there and trying to spread it apart. And it just, it wasn't, yeah. I mean, I got it, but I'm not happy with it. So I'm going to change it here soon. I uh, didn't rotate the the alternator terminal down all the way, so the boost tube would hit it if I put it on. So here I'm just rotating the uh, terminal down so I can put this boost tube back on here. Pretty standard. It's got a hose clamp on the throttle body and that quick disconnect clamp or whatever, spring clamp on the intercooler. Hook your temperature sensor back up. Put the cover back on. And that's pretty much it. All right, so here it is installed. The alternator bolts up to the motor just fine. Here's the battery. I'm going to try to get some different terminals, some shorter ones or something, because these cables are a little tight. Routing these. This one goes down here, this red one you can see, comes to the, the box here. These kind of got to bend them a little bit to get them to go down in here. There's another one, the one that goes to the starter. That's uh, this front one here, it goes down, it actually loops back around, and it's this wire here that goes down to the starter. From the factory, it comes around this way. But, uh, you can snake it in down there and it comes out here these gotta bend these just slightly to clear this bracket they got little notches holding them but they're a little snug so but everything bolted up all right i just wish i had some different uh standoffs for this battery because this battery came with threaded posts and i just bought these uh uh, tapered posts or whatever you call them and uh, put them on there I think it's a little too tall which was a little shorter it still clears the hood obviously it's going to shut just fine uh, the alternator kind of hard to see now I put it back together but you can see where the post is the B positive post down there it comes real close to the throttle body it's really hard to get that boot on there because the, the only thing different with this thro or this uh, alternator is the factory one. The post is actually here versus that one. The new one, it's like it's like up here where this is, I think. So it moves it slightly. I don't know if the the vans have a different throttle body or different intake on there to where it's not so close or how they get around it. I haven't looked that closely at one. But besides that it wasn't too bad. So yeah, it's uh fired up. So one more thing, these idler pulleys, there's actually two of them but they're not the same. If you look at the pulley itself, I'm pretty sure the pulley itself is the same because it's, I can't tell a difference in the pulley. The only thing I can see a difference in is the bolt. So they're both, they both use a 15 mil socket to get them off, but this one is the big, uh, focus here, the big bolt, but if you notice, this is left-handed thread. And the other one's right-handed thread. And it's actually a smaller bolt. Like the threads of the bolt is smaller. But the head is the same size for some reason. And you see it's a left-handed thread. So this is the one that I bought. The, so the part number I showed you earlier is this one with the left-handed thread. There is a second one that uh, has a right-handed thread. But it's pretty much identical as far as the bearing and the pulley goes. All right, everybody, as you can see, Got it fired up. The only message I got was uh, obviously I need to reset or calibrate the uh, the compass. Um, 
but the only message I got was for the driver's window. Um, you just gotta hold up on the button, and roll the window down, and it came down automatically, um, but it wouldn't come back up automatically. So you just gotta um, pull up on the on the switch and wait for the window to go all the way up, and then hold it for like an additional five seconds once the window is all the way up, and that'll reset the uh, the computer in there. So, but yeah. Pretty simple install, not too bad. From the time I got started to the time I was done is about like an hour, hour and a half, something like that, uh, to get both uh, the battery and the alternator swapped out. I am gonna take the old alternator, the original alternator off of this and put it on um, the new motor going in, that's going into the Camaro. Take Probably just take all the parts I took off of this today and uh, save those for the new motor. But uh, that's the plan anyway. Um, if I have any issues with this in the future, I will give you guys an update, but uh, as of right now, everything's looks like it's turning out alright. Have a good one, guys.